That President Biden is about to board a plane and return to the U.S. after his trip to Vietnam and the G20 in India, aimed in part at countering China's influence in Asia. A short time ago, he paid his respects at the John McCain Memorial in Hanoi. The late senator was held captive there during the Vietnam War. Now, after President Biden's trip to the G20 in India to meet with global leaders and a visit to Vietnam to discuss a new strategic partnership, Biden spoke at a press conference in Vietnam on Sunday, and it ended a, a little abruptly. It wasn't confrontational at all. Thank, thank you, everybody. This ends thank, the press thank conference. You. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Well, music uh, aside, I want to bring in uh, Eli Yokely. He's a political analyst for the Morning Consult. As we shift to talking a little bit about Biden's reelection campaign in the 2024 race, uh, overall. So uh, on the press conference situation, the White House said they only planned on five questions. Biden also made a comment before that sound bite sounded like a joke saying, I don't know about you, but I'm going to bed. Um, overall, though, d does the ending to that presser in that particular fashion matter politically? <laughs> it was amazing mood music to uh, <laughs> usher him out. I I'm not sure how much it really affects him. Uh, politically, this moment, moments like this don't get a ton of play among the American people in, in, in on their own. But look, a lot of these things add up together, and the American people clearly are more concerned about Biden's age, his mental fitness, his ability to do his job than they were before he took office. Um, look, he's still competitive with Donald Trump uh, in, in contests against each other. He's winning the Democratic primary by a lot. But definitely, it's something that's weighing on the uh, the American electorate. And you know, you, you made a key point that these kind of things don't get attract don't get traction on their own. Sometimes it, it's a sum of the parts here. And GOP presidential candidate Nikki Haley, she was on CNN State of the Union on Sunday. Uh, here's part of what she had to say. I think the majority of Americans know we need a new generational leader, that we need to need leave the negativity uh, of the past behind us. M the majority of Americans don't want to see a rematch between Trump and Biden. In terms of the primary, look, we're just getting started. Debate season is what kicks off um, the primary. We have made huge jumps in the primary polls so far, but this is the beginning of it. Uh, phrasing new generational leader. Haley's used that type of uh, language before, but but could that type of messaging be effective, especially for some of the younger candidates here? Possibly. I mean, a good chunk, about half of Republican primary voters agree that they might want a new generational leader. But at the same time, you know, about six and 10 Republican primary voters say every day that they back Donald Trump. Uh, the field is so fragmented today. There are so many candidates going for about 40 percent of the electorate uh, until there is some sort of consolidation among Republican candidates. I think anybody is going to have a tough time. I mean, even Ron DeSantis, a new generational leader on his own, is only getting about 15 or 16 percent support among the Republican electorate nationwide. There's too many candidates right now to try to consolidate some of this against Donald Trump. And look, he's doing better among young people than all of them are combined. And so. A lot of these Republicans are going to be having to think over the next coming months about whether they actually do want to defeat Donald Trump next year. If all of them continue their campaigns, it's going to be a really, really big lift uh, for the anti-Trump forces in the party. And of course, as these as little headlines get made here and there, comments get made here and there, the poll positions haven't necessarily changed too significantly in relation to Donald Trump. He stayed out in front. Um, now, look, there was a rivalry game on the football field uh, Saturday between Iowa and Iowa State. There was one off the field as well. Both DeSantis and Trump uh, attended the game. And even though Trump has a strong lead, do you expect his campaign schedule to pick up a bit ahead of the primaries or basically either coast to the finish line? I mean, it definitely should. I think the American people like to hear from him. And I think he, he seems to really like it, too. I mean, Videos we saw on social media of him going to a fraternity house or going out there and pretending to flip burgers. You know, he does better at that than people maybe expected him to. Um, you know, he's winning right now with young voters more than any other candidate. He's clearly competitive in Iowa and just about any other state. And so this is his presidential race to lose. But I think we're definitely going to see President Trump start ramping up his campaign schedule. Yeah, yeah. Well, personally, I'd rather have been at the uh, Texas-Alabama game, but that's just me, you know. Um, Eli Oakley of the Morning Consult, thank you.
Anytime.